Hey everybody, welcome back to the garage. If this is your first time visiting my channel, please go ahead, click on subscribe, and also click on the bell to receive all the updates and activities on my channel. So today, I am filming all of this with the GoPro. We'll see how it turns out. Um, so this is the uh, the latest update on the 1996 Ultra 680. Uh, last video, we did a tear down of the engine. Um, as if you watched that video, you probably already know that the uh, that engine needs a new crank. Um, Probably going to be about better part of a month before we start the rebuild process on that. So that's going to be on the bench for quite a while before we can get to it, just just because of time. But in the meantime, what we're doing is uh, I've stripped the graphics off the hood, and I've been wet sanding the uh, some of the minor scuffs on it. I'll have a video on the process that I do for that. Um, for the most part, the hood's in good shape. Um, but what we're going to do now is we're going to remove the uh, the uh, the cover on the seat and we're going to replace that so the, the cover i'm going with uh, is actually the same cover that uh well the same manufacturer of the cover that i use for the xcr uh, this is from a company that's uh, on ebay uh, up in canada scotty sledgehead i'll go ahead and leave a link to his uh storefront but you know what i was very happy with the uh the cover for the xcr so um, what's nice about it is you can pretty much custom order anything that you want. They have the period correct piping and everything else. The uh, the seat top is a non-slip material, and then they have like a you know this is what I went with, but you know it's kind of like a, a textured finish. And then on the other side of the liner, it has the uh, the under padding, right? And also it has the uh, the flap on it with the um, the closures and then it also has on the back side the two retention straps for pulling through the foam to make it nice and tight all right so what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and remove that seat and uh, start stripping off that old crack liner okay so what we're doing is I've elevated the uh, the back of the seat. There's about five gallons of premix that I put in this tank that I that I use for doing a test run on that engine. Um, so, you know, obviously if you're working on the seat, because you're gonna be, you know, turning around and flipping it over and everything else, you want as much gas removed out of the tank as you can just to make it easier to work on. So I, we got a can and I have a safety siphon going into the can. And, you know, the seat's just elevated to force all the gas to the front of the tank so we can get it as much as we can out of it. All right, so we have the seat removed and we have it up on a little bench and do yourself a favor, you know, whatever you're using for a work surface, put something soft on it. Um, Cause you may not realize it now, but once you put the cover, once you start working on the new cover, last thing you want to do is catch that cover on an edge and tear it. All right, so removing the cover is pretty easy. You know, here is the uh, bottom of the seat, which essentially is the, the, uh, the tank. Um, so the cover is just held on by a bunch of staples all the way around it and all we're going to do is we're just going to remove the staples and go all the way around and uh, pop the cover off. All right, so we've gone around and removed the majority of the staples from the perimeter, right? All the way around. So what you wanna do is just take a magnet on a stick and then just go across, pick up all your staples, right? So you wanna keep a track, you know, keep track of these cause you don't wanna uh, kinda of disappear and then uh, find out that you're stabbing your new cover when you're going to put them on. All right, so the next thing we got to do is we have more staples from the tail light. So go ahead and remove those. Uh, the lens is just held on by four screws. Go ahead and pop those out. And we're going to remove the screws on, on that side as well. All right, so one of the last things we have to do before we can pull the cover off is we got to drill out the rivets that hold the, uh, 
it locks on to the uh, the hold the seat flap down so just take a drill and uh, you're just gonna go very slowly and uh, drill out the, the head of the rivet you don't want to go too deep because you don't want to go and uh, drill out the, uh, the actual plastic backer of, of the uh, tank and not have anything to uh, replace the rivets so we're just going to go very slowly Right, so that comes right off, and these are aluminum. Doesn't take that much to take them off. So it's actually spinning. So I, uh, I'm grabbing it from the back end. There you go. All right. So we did uh, the right hand side. So now we're gonna do the same thing on the left. Okay, so at this point, we're just about ready to remove the cover, but before we can do that, there is actually a tension rod that goes along the front of the uh, the tank that holds the cover down in the front, and it's just held on by a 7 16 uh, nut. So go ahead and put on a, a set of vice grips on the on the body, and then go ahead and take that off, and the uh, we'll flip the cover off, and we'll uh, remove the grommet from the uh, fuel tank. All right, so here's that loop. We just pulled it out. Again, it's only it's threaded only on one side, and then it's held on the other side just by a, a captive ball. Okay, so at this point, we're pretty much ready to take the cover off. Go ahead, and remove the grommet from the uh, from the fuel neck that's hold, that holds the uh, the cover down to the uh, the tank, and then remove the uh, the gauge. And the last thing you want to do, and most people kind of forget about doing this, uh, it's gonna be kind of hard to. To show you but there's again for the crease of the uh, the cover that holds it nice and tight to the foam uh, there's two straps that go through the foam and what you want to do is you just want to release them so then you can pull the cover off so what we're gonna do we're gonna go ahead and pull this off maybe all right all right so there's those uh, the two straps that pass through the foam right there. And all we're gonna do is, there you go, cover's, cover's removed. All right, so taking a look at the foam, we do have a little bit of damage. Not sure what that is. Now there is a little bit of a, of a uh, depression in here. So I do have some foam. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna, uh, Go grab a piece and we'll essentially get it to fit and uh, just re uh, repair this depression so when we put the cover in, it's nice and flat and you don't see a dip. All right, so what I've been doing for the last hour, hour and a half is I've been taking some of this foam and I've been using it to repair um, some of the damage on the, uh, on the uh, seat base. Um, so it's just a matter of, you know, Taking an approximate shape and then just kind of cutting it out with scissors and, and forming it in and everything else. So I got the, I have this large depression filled. There was a hole on the radius, so I kind of filled that in and same thing for here and everything else. So uh, what I have to do at this point, there's still a little bit of a hole right here that we got to fill in. I'll show you the process on that. All right, so we're going to fill in this hole. Uh, it's probably about two and a half inches deep. Uh, two and a half inches long by probably about a half an inch deep and all I'm going to do is I'm just going to take a foam piece of foam and I'm just going to kind of make it a half inch thick so we're going to cut it lengthwise all right so that's a piece that we're going to be dealing with and all we're going to do is we're going to uh, cut it down to the approximate length Okay, so that's the approximate size. And then we're just gonna just kinda start cutting the foam to the, uh, the, the general shape that we're trying to fill. 
and what you can do is we're just gonna start working at it and uh, so I know the shape of it really needs to be a V so what we're gonna do is we're gonna start taking the corners off on the bottom and uh, again it's really just about trial and error right Nothing really hard about it, just cut, 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 right? So what we're gonna do now is, I can see that, we're gonna have to take it down on the ends, right? <clears throat> right, so we're getting pretty close. so we're getting pretty close like I said just a matter of uh, fine-tuning the shape and again it's only foam so you want it to be a little bit oversized so when you do put it in there it will compress and it will uh, hold it hold itself in there Alright, so that's what we're going for right there. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to finalize that shape and I'll come back once we're done. Alright, so after about five minutes of, of uh, shaping the foam and everything else, I got everything that I cut off of it. Um, I went ahead and glued it in using some of this, just some spray adhesive. Just spray both sides. It's, it's essentially uh, like contact cement. Put it in there and then just press it in and then the, uh, the adhesive will hold it in. Um, you know, if you're working on it and uh, you know it won't uh, quite go in right don't be afraid to uh, make the uh, your existing uh, area that you're working in consistent so if you need to take out some of the foam from the original seat just to make it a little bit more consistent uh, it'll be a lot easier than trying to cut the foam to fit to fit that so at this point the uh, all the uh, the foam repair is done on the seat um, we're gonna go ahead and uh, put the cover on it and uh, show you what need what you need to do to uh, fix it to the the seat and then put it back on the uh, the sled okay so we have the uh, the cover on there right now and uh, you know there's always a, the question of alignment and everything else and you know when you're working on uh, putting in a, uh, a cover on whether or not it's gonna be the, it's gonna be far forward and back and everything else but with this particular style of cover it's actually pretty easy and the reason is you know you got the hole in the cover that passes through the uh, for the uh, for the tank and then you know you have the uh, retention bow then that that's going to go in the front that's going to essentially bring it up forward and then it's going to fix it in this place and then you have the snaps that clip into the side of the tunnel right so with those three elements it pretty much uh, gets the alignment forward and everything else and then it's just a matter once you do that that's a matter of just pulling in the uh, the fabric tight against the seat foam and then you're working your way back to the hump of the uh, the seat base so what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and, and uh, insert the uh, the tension bow into the uh into the uh the space that's allocated for it in the cover you got to thread through the tank first all right so then it's going to catch All right, so I threaded it through at this point. I apologize if my hands are in the way. All right, all right, so now that we got it started, I'll lay the seat back down. So now with the retainer bow in place, we're just going to uh, look at the piping 
on both sides and make sure it's centered. All right. It is going to be a little, bit, a little bit bunched up. That's fine. That's just the nature of how it's constructed. All right. So at this point, we're looking pretty good. So what we'll do is, uh, before we start stapling it, I mean, we're going to put the seat on the, uh, the sled and we're going to fasten the two side snaps and uh, see how it looks before we start making any commi commitments on it. We have the seat pushed all the way up to the front and we got the two snaps in place. They're holding it to the tunnel. And right now we're just looking at the general appearance on it. It looks pretty good. And I think we're going to be all set to staple it. Uh, everything looks fine. All right. So there's the uh, the two cinch straps pulled through, and uh, you know once you pull them through, the, you just turn the buckles and they and they lock into the base, so they can't pull out. All right. So what we're starting to do is we're starting to draw the fabric down. Uh, nice and tight and uh, you know because of, of the shadows and everything else it looks really wrinkled but it doesn't look that bad in person uh, so what we're doing is we're drawing the the fabric tight down uh, at the bottom of the seat base just to pick up a lot of the slack and we only have three staples in here for now so what we're going to do now is we're going to we'll start uh, drawing it in on the sides and uh, start pulling all the slack out all right so now we're getting ready to staple the fabric to the bottom of the tank so if we look at the cover the it's actually notched up towards the front of the tank and the reason why this is a no staple zone because if you do staple it you can go right into the tank so you know the notch is there by design what you want to kind of do is look at the original stapling pattern and kind of see what Polaris did and look at the, at all the witness marks and kind of stay true to that you really don't want to go here and here and here because you, you have to remember the tank uh, pretty, much, pretty much exists all the way down into this area. So if you put staples in here, you're going to blow into the tank. So you really only want to staple like a half inch away from that edge. All right, so at this point, I've uh, I've gone around, and I've stapled the fabric to the tail light housing, and what we're gonna do is we're gonna slit it, and so we can uh, get the tail light attached, or well, the tail light lens attached to it. So I'm just taking a uh, exacto knife.
All right, so there you go. The seat's all done. Back on the sled temporarily. And uh, happy to say that the uh, machine is definitely looking a lot better than it did a couple months ago when it first rolled into the garage. Um, I'm very happy with the, uh, the quality of the fabric and everything else. So it looks very good. So, all right, if there's any questions or comments or, or anything like that regarding the installation of the cover, go ahead and leave them in the comments box. I'll get back to you as soon as I can. Um, the next video that's gonna be in the series is the, uh, the uh, installation of the engine back into the, uh, into the sled. And uh, <clears throat> hopefully we'll get this thing out in the daylight under its own power and uh, go from there. All right, so as always, thanks for watching and have a great day and I'll talk to you later. See ya.